Hello viewers, welcome to RK Keynotes. In the previous videos, we have seen how to download NetBeans with JDK and how to create and run the first Java application program using NetBeans IDE. And also we have explored how to debug a program and how to set breakpoints and, and how to view the execution flow of a Java program step by step. Hope you are clear with that. In today's video, we'll talk about a practical problem and we are going to calculate an electricity bill. Uh, we are going to use a scanner and a few uh, simple conditions. So before getting into the video, if you have not subscribed yet, do subscribe my YouTube channel, RK Keynotes. And let's get into the video. Also, you can follow the Blogspot and Instagram ID as well. So the problem today uh, over here is that uh, um, develop a Java application to generate electricity bill. And uh, you need to have um, the following numbers that is customer number name previous month reading current month reading and type of the eb connection that is domestic or commercial and the the tariffs are given below if it is um, domestic or 400 units we are going to charge uh, rupees one per unit and there are some conditions fine so let's flip to netbeans uh, for the practical implementation All right, if you see this, uh, I have got a package, which means that I have created a folder in the name exercise one. So my uh, package name is same as my folder. Oh, here, if you see this, uh, I'm using import um, java.util. I'm going to import a package, which is util. Uh, so under utility uh, package, uh, so these are all the number of uh, super classes available. So scanner is a super class. We can use scanner to accept into from the user and also there are some other methods we will be exploring those things later so as of now we are going to deal with scanner so these are all the available um, you know super class i'm gonna use scanner here fine okay yeah so instead of using scanner you can directly use it as a dot star no issues and uh, so this is my class uh, at least one class should be public so i'm gonna use public class electricity and the class name is electricity and over here my file name is also electricity if you see this electricity.java okay so i have got a main method that is public static void void main string arguments and th there should be at least one main method because your jvm will check for the main method if it is not then it will say that no main method found fine so over here I'm declaring all these required variables that like uh, units. So I have used to double data type and amount because it might be in points and string customer number name connection and all these things I'm accepting as string and uh, previous reading current reading these things I'm accepting in double. I mean uh, uh, and uh, over here I'm gonna use scanner so because uh, to accept input and that is scanner class this is a reference variable i'm going to create an object and uh, new scanner and system dot in refers to system input we, using keyboard you can provide uh, some input fine and uh, <coughs> so let's accept input from the user that is i'm going to ask the user enter customer number so he'll be entering something that should be taken or that should be saved into customer number so cno refers to customer number which is equal to using what we are going to store I mean using scanner I'm gonna take this input so it is the reference variable is input so I'm gonna use input here dot next uh, as you see this this customer number is in string so we have just used next right so wherever I mean if your variables got stored under string we're gonna use next if it is stored under if you see this for uh, previous reading uh, it is given in double so I'm using next double if it is int then you need to use next i and t so i and d these things should be in caps fine so over here uh, even uh, s caps and uh, for string and for scanner it should be s caps f and even for system okay so i'm going to accept uh, um, customer name so for th for that uh, under this uh, variable that is c name and i'm going to do the same for previous reading and uh, current reading and connection type that is uh, the user should enter either d or c that is for domestic and uh, commercial all right so the in inputs are accepted and here is the formula that uh, we are going to uh, use a formula like units equal to so current reading minus previous reading so to calculate units we are going to use this 
uh, formula and uh, I'm gonna use simple um, if so I'm gonna check uh, if the connection equals to if the user presses D if it is domestic then uh, the tariff rates are given in the question so simply I'm just using all those things so this is for domestic and this is for commercial right so it just enter all these things and I'm gonna use else if to compare multiple conditions fine so so here uh, if units less than zero then amount is zero and if units less than or equal to hundred then as per the tariff plan we are just applying all these units so finally if um, all these conditions got checked then finally it should print we need to use else and um, we are going to print uh, units times six all right so then we are going to use again uh, we need to have um, one more thing uh, so we need to check either if it is commercial then it should get into this uh, if uh, the same thing units less than zero then the amount is zero and again we are going to follow the tariff plan all right so once all these things are done uh, we are going to print the amount fine so that's it so there is nothing else so this is a simple program uh, us using simple uh, conditions uh, <coughs> So let's run this. I'm gonna go to projects and right, right click and run. Let's see the output. So it is building, and over here we have got the output. Let me. Yeah, so customer number is one, and uh, I'm gonna name it as Aro. And previous month reading is 66, and current month reading is 200. Let's say. So it is going to ask either uh, D or C. So I'm gonna enter D, okay, caps D, and it is showing uh, the bill amount is 335. All right. So this is a simple program. We have not used any, you know, validation checks and all. So I'm so hope uh, you understood this program. I'm gonna try with another input. I'm gonna run this again. And you see that uh, I'm gonna enter uh, instead of a number, I'm gonna s okay same number, and uh, I'm gonna have some name, and instead of reading, instead of ent entering int or you know or numbers, I'm gonna use some something like this. You see that it is going to throw some exception, and it came out of the program, right? It got terminated from the program, so now I can't continue the program, which means that I should run again, right? But um, at, at this instance, I I couldn't. I could not continue so um, what should we do now so we need to catch these exceptions so that is what uh, you'll be uh, you know um, we have seen in unit number three so I'll be explaining over here so what is the use of exceptions I have taken one more program and tested over here so what I have done is I'm using try and catch block so in try block which I'm going to you know uh, try all these things and uh, in catch block if there is any exception I'm, I'm, I'm just going to print that exception so this is an object so I'm just going to print what kind of error it is that's it or if you want to uh, have a user defined exception I mean if you want to define any you know uh, something like uh, or, um, you know output mismatch or what you can use it and we're gonna explore this one in detail using throw throws fine so as of now I'm just showing you the use of exception so what I'm trying to do is I'm 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 gonna have one more uh, try catch block. So for instance, I'm just going to copy paste the same thing. What I'm trying to say is that if you have a catch an exception, if you if you handle exceptions, uh, it will throw the error, but you can continue the program. I mean, you can continue the rest rest of the program. So your program will keep executing the rest of the program. It won't come out of uh, like in the previous example it won't get terminated and then it won't come out of the program fine so what I have done here is if you see this uh, I have uh, the same program I just copy paste this try catch block again so let's see that mm, you see that I'm gonna run this again and so over here uh, the customer number is 5 and I'm gonna enter customer name and as I said that uh, in instead of entering numbers I'm gonna give something like this so now it is going to throw the exception you see that java.util.input mismatch exception 
so I understood that there is a mismatch with the input see that after printing this exception it didn't terminate the program it didn't come out of the program see it is still continuing to execute the rest of the program so this is the advantage of using exceptions in your program fine so now again I can continue with, the, with this so it is going to work and uh, all right so the reading and I'm gonna have so this is how we can handle exceptions so it's going to commercial I'm gonna get the output hope you understood so here I have uh, given the explanation for both the things how to use scanner and uh, how to use exceptions we will uh, see this exception in detail using throw throws in the upcoming videos and I have got Viva questions for you and uh, the questions goes like this um, yeah so this is a task for you um, if you are really interested to try something um, try, uh, try this one and let me know in the comment section uh, so th that is a program to display students total and average marks okay you need to accept inputs such as uh, roll number name maths physics chemistry and um, yeah all these marks and, and you need to calculate total and average so you, you after that you, you need to print all these things roll number name total and average right try this one and, and let me know in the comment section and your viva questions goes like this so these are all the expected viva questions from exercise one so just go through this and um, i'll be revealing this answers in the next video so in the next video we're going to talk about exercise number two with some other problem and uh, hope you understood this if you have got any queries or um, in, you know any suggestions do let me know in the comment section thank you and thanks for watching the video